Welcome, everyone. I just want to know, uh, can you all see my screen at all, or are you just seeing me? Just you. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for attending this uh, summer portion of uh, the FBA uh, Summer Conference, and thank you, Neil, so much for doing all this leadership and setting everything up for everyone, and making this available free to everyone. So, well, um, and Kathy had a big part of that, too. Try awesome, to and Kathy as well. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. All right, uh, I'm, I was asked a, a few weeks ago by Jeff Kerr to do a fireside chat. He just said, could you just do like a, a Jim Matthews fireside chat and just make us feel good about what we're doing? I said, yes, you know, but it's going to be informative too. And he's like, do that, do that. So I want to thank Jeff as well for, for asking me and inviting me. And I asked him why. And uh, he says, because you've been through a lot in your career and you've been through a lot of these times. I mean, I started teaching in 1985. And he says, and so if you can do that and bring us through this and, and, and help us think through this thing, that'd be great. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on, on my presentation. And I'm reading, but you can't see what I'm reading. So that's awesome. Uh, so life after COVID and returning, the big return. And uh, what we're going to do today is just open up a little bit of can of worms for everyone here to begin thinking. Think about you. Think about your classroom. Um, this is only about what you can control. That's all I'm doing today is open up worms. I don't have all the answers because nobody has all the answers. But what I'm going to ask is if everybody has something, a pad or electronic pad or something, would you please start jotting down some things that you want to think about uh, or add to a discussion later? Or if we could keep a Google Doc going throughout the rest of the year, or throughout the rest of the summer uh, to help each other out, begin to start to uh, uh, write some things down. And today what I'm going to do is, is try to just set you on a scavenger hunt for some answers, okay? So um, talk to your friends. Uh, you can't come up with all the answers. People uh, will begin to look at the future with you. That's what we want, okay? Your friends can be from anywhere, by the way, not just the state of Florida, other states and anywhere around the world. Uh, we're all in the same boat. And I was going to ask Neil also, does he still have any contact with Japanese bands? What are they doing in Japan? They're just so heavy in van. And we're going to find all those answers out uh, before the school year starts, because that's what we do. We're proactive. All right, today's about gathering uh, creative ideas and possible solutions. It's not about complaining, fear mongering, or whining. Please, if you could just take out something to start writing notes, I'd love that. That'd be awesome and help uh, with our discussion toward the end. All right, uh, keep in mind that every district and every school within your district are going to approach returning differently. No two countries, no two states, no two districts, no two schools will approach the same return, okay? That's something you can't control. So what we want to focus on today is what you can control, and that's what you're going to do with you and your classroom, All right? Uh, what has never changed and will change no matter what since the beginning of time, since the beginning of teaching, what has never changed and never will change? Number one, sound concepts. Those aren't going to change. COVID or not, they're not going to change. And values are never going to change. And so I'm all about teaching both of those things. I'm going to focus on teaching sound concepts and teaching values, regardless if it's one kid in my room or 101 kids in my room. Those things are what I'm going to pay attention to. That's my focus. So your job is to help students bring forth the best which they are capable of doing and being. Uh, and that goes for their sound and their character. And that goes for individuals and groups, whatever size, it, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, that's your goal as a teacher. Whatever parameters or the new normal, um, those two traits will never change. Never lose focus of your passion to help students achieve those two concepts and you will never lose your joy. So several years ago, I heard a, a saying and I transferred it into my teaching and it revolutionized my teaching. And uh, the question is this, do you teach the subject to your students or do you teach students your subject? Let that sit for a second. Do you teach your subject to your students, subject being the primary focus, or do you teach students your subject, now students are the primary focus? My focus went from being a band director and teaching kids about band and when I turned that to students, and then I use band as a, a mode or a method or a platform to get to those students, everything about it changed so much. Uh, and the relationships that I developed with those students and their parents and their families became the ultimate thing there. And uh, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you how, how important it was. 
I've performed at 40 students' weddings because of that. And 41 and 42 are coming up in November. Uh, that's amazing, performing at 42 students' weddings. The students became my focus, and, and they're still calling and asking, can you play at my, my wedding? And I, I haven't been in the classroom in five years. So anyway, uh, don't get me wrong, by the way. Uh, I didn't play games when I was on the podium. When I was on the podium, it was all about band. When I was off the podium, it was all about kids. And I just kept those two separated there. So, all right, this outlook uh, is more important now than ever. Keep that philosophy at the forefront as we delve into some of the things we need to think about before we return. What's really important for you as a music teacher? I can't answer that, but you can answer that. What's really important for you as a music teacher? Keep that at the forefront of your thinking and convictions while you're approaching your administrators, your department chairs, and even other teachers. You keep those kids before you and you're always gonna do what's best for them. Your administrator is gonna be way too busy to try to come up with solutions for every teacher on campus. They just are. Wouldn't it be better for you to already have basic plan of action and precautions so that you're one of the teachers seen as proactive and they can trust you? Okay, their typical first answer based off of fear is gonna be no. <laughs> it just is, y'all. I've always had that answer no. So what I did was I learned how to approach my administrators with many suggestions and said, which one of these suggestions would you like to do? And, uh, and they always just did one of the suggestions that I already come up with. I wanted to problem solve before I got to them. It was really cool. My brain's going, Paula Kreider uh, touched on so many of the things that I'm going to touch on uh, today. So if you saw that session, you're just going to get a little double dose in some of these things here. All right, my second question to you is, besides what's really important to you, is what endears the students to you? What is it about you that they just love? And they, when you are, we're doing the summer, uh, the, the end of the semester things, I had one teacher say to me, um, she goes, I didn't greet the kids when I was doing the online little video things that she was doing. She said, I didn't greet them like I normally did. And all their comments coming back was, you don't greet us the same. And they really just wanted to hear her, her goofy introduction that made her her. So what endears the students to you? That's what you're going to need to do for uh, consistently on a daily basis. You are the reason they chose your class and want to stay there. Give them what they need from your personality, your calm resolve, your leadership, your authority, uh, and, your, and most importantly, your willingness to listen to them and incorporate their suggestions uh, if, if they're solidly based suggestions. You are training them to be successful, productive adults, and they're going to watch you and see how you react to all these things when they, when they get back, okay? They really do watch us. So uh, what endears you to them? They need that a lot. So if it's goofiness, be a little goofy and then get to work, okay? All right, uh, when you think of someone that you love or inspired by, and you always want to be around them, what is their it? What endears you to them? Think about somebody that just always inspires you or who you really love. For me, it's the sparkle in their eyes. It's their smile. It's their passion. I don't want to be around people that are not passion, passionate. It's their integrity, and it's how they make me feel about myself. If that's so, then those characteristics are what I need to give to my students. It's a balance of those personal relationships mixed with tasks and purpose and goals. Those are the ingredients for a successful recipe. All right, you, can't, you can recruit a student into your band program, but keeping them there is very important. So, all right, um, they want things that endear you to them, but they also want to learn and grow and be challenged and be successful. And uh, one gentleman this morning in the, uh, in the question and answer said, how do we keep those kids? And I'm going to agree with what Paula said. Um, she said, you know, get challenging music. You always challenge them. People want to be challenged. They can't have candy all the time. They just, they want to be challenged. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, the kids that are not challenged, what do they do, you all? They quit. They, they look for somewhere else where they're going to have those needs met. So keep that in mind as you're planning out your goals for the year. Um, keep in mind that you choose a curriculum, and that literature is really important to that. 
So every level of band must be working on some type of good quality literature in order to keep them engaged and productive, both at school and at home. Those are the things, by the way, that you also want when you're choosing to be involved in something. Always keep this in, remind, in, in mind. Most of your schools, they choose you. You know, yeah, they think about band, but it's really the band director. We all, all the data shows that it's the band director that's the number one thing. So just keep that in your forefront of your mind there. They choose to be with you. So treat them like that. All right. Uh, what do you want them to remember about you in your class by the end of the year or by the end of three years if you have three year school system? Always have those goals in mind at the front of everything you do as well. All right, here we go. Ready? Who are your customers? Because this is really important as you begin to return. As you plan your return, here's what I want you to do. Put yourself in the mind frame of an 11-year-old kid, okay? You have to plan like an adult, but you plan with the receivers being 11 to 14 years old, all right? You don't and shouldn't have all the answers. All parties must have buy-in for the things you, you are, and uh, uh, all the things that you're going to do, okay? And some of the things that we're doing, we probably should be doing anyway, right? Just cl clean, being clean and good hygiene and all that kind of stuff. We need to do that anyway. So thank God, I probably, most of you during testing season, if you were doing testing of instruments, you probably got sick every year because kids are blowing all at you and they're doing their flute sounds and everything. Well, that's going to go away this year. And so you're probably going to be a healthier person. And so will they. Um, tell them what you would be comfortable with and what you would be uncomfortable with and then ask them what they're going to be comfortable with or uncomfortable with. So part of this, when we get down to the, the brass things of this, and you're going to get a handout in just a little bit here, is the, the, the basics of this um, clinic here is what do I do to make myself feel comfortable and protected from the kids? And what do they need to feel comfortable and be protected from you, <laughs> right? Because when I grew up in band, man, if somebody's instrument didn't work, the band director took it right out of their hands and played on it and fixed it or adjusted it and handed it back to the kid. That is so nasty. I, I just remember going, that is so nasty. I would not touch that instrument after that band director did that. Well, now it's just like, did you touch their instrument and then hand it back to them? That's like touching a grocery cart and saying to the person, here, here's my grocery cart. Everybody's now going to go, what the heck? I'm not touching that grocery cart. So what makes you feel protected from them and what makes them feel protected from you? And those are the things that we're going to start to open up today. All right. Um, for me, the directive needs to be established by you. You're the leader. But the process, that's negotiable. Okay, have a basic plan, but be willing to compromise your process according to what the kids agree on in the class. You need to make an 11-year-old kid a part of your process. And if you want mom and dad and the home people that are really the supporters of everything you do, if you want them to feel comfortable, you know what? You need their input also because they're sending those kids to you every day because they love you and trust you. So incorporate all of your questions and all of the, everything you're doing, your processes with the feedback you get from, from all parties involved. Try to eliminate as many fears as possible, okay? We're not designed to function properly under fear. Liberate yourself and your students from those fears so you can get to music. All right, what did you learn from this time out from the virus? Think of all that. What fears do you have, still have maybe? What steps did you take to keep safe and virus-free so far? Hopefully everybody did. What similarities do the students have and what did they learn from this? Returning to, to teaching and being around more people than you have all summer, you should keep those cautions there. I'm not gonna run in fast to get back to my kids, you know? My process every day when that bell rang, I would go to that door and this is just me, you all, is my relationship that I had with the kids. Uh, so many of them said, man, you're like a dad I never had, you know, and, and so that was really important to me. And, and before class started, I never let a kid in my room if they had an attitude. <laughs> I just pull them aside and say, hey, you're not coming in my room if you don't have a good attitude because I need you to learn here. And they're like, oh, man, you know, whatever. And I said, hey, just get calmed down. I'll help you through anything. I'll talk you through anything. 
but you're not coming in here with that attitude. So just take a second, gather your thoughts, whatever. And so many guys, girls, they would just give me a hug on the way in. Well, those are over. That's over. I can't do that anymore. So I'm going to have to think of how my process of, of greeting students is going to be. No, no more high fives, no more anything like that. So what's your greeting process? That's going to be really important from day one. Uh, a, a gentleman had a, a uh, he's a teacher. He had a mask on. I saw him somewhere and he smiled and greeted me. He's a handshaker. He's like a strong handshaker. He smiled and greeted me and the twinkle was in his eye and he made me feel so comfortable, but we were still five, six feet away from each other. What can you do to welcome those kids back and, 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 and give them that same feeling? Okay. Um, let me jump down here. What is your focus? If teaching music to the students is your focus, you're going to get frustrated because there's going to be a lot of new directives from everybody. People are going to say, well, no, you can't do that way anymore and all that kind of stuff. If that's your focus, you're going to want to quit. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to feel defeated. So, so don't think that way. Think I'm here with kids. I want to teach my music. I want to have class. I want to help kids get the best sound of their instruments possible. And if we have to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, we have to do these little diversions. I'm okay with that. Just take those weights off your shoulders, please. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you a very little quick story here. I was in a classroom in Brevard County uh, working with a teacher. And I was there before school started and no kids were there yet. It was just before MPA, a few weeks before MPA and things weren't going. She wasn't as far as long as she wanted to be. She just said, Tim, I'm so discouraged right now. I don't think I can do this much longer. And I said, how long have you been teaching? She said, eight years. And I rubbed it in and I said, you don't think you can do this for 22 more years? <laughs> and her shoulders sank and she said, no, I don't. And a few minutes later there, we were talking, standing there talking, the bell rang uh, for kids to start coming in. A few students started coming in before school and then one cute little girl came up and, uh, and she asked the teacher, can you help me with something? And so the teacher went over and she helped her. After she came back, I said, could you do that for 22 more years? She goes, what? And I said, can you help kids like you just did to her for 22 more years? And she said, yes. And I said, then make that your focus because you're going to get the results you want if she's your focus. So take those weights off your shoulders. Look forward to getting back to kids. That's what we're all here for. All right. What color glasses are you looking through? Sometimes we just need to put on a different pair of glasses that's going to change your perspective. Think of when you started band, how many every years ago that was as a beginner, every single thing you have done has trained you and led you up to right now. You're not here by any mistake. You're the toughest people in the whole school. You're the toughest people on the planet. Band directors have more hours and more things to do than anyone. My administration, coaches, nobody was there after I was. I mean, I was always there last. We're tough people. So you've been working on this all your life, being a music teacher. Don't let this little thing knock you off your path. This is an awesome career. It is not for wimps, though. This career is for hard workers, creative thinkers, flexible, quick responders, and people who love guiding and challenging kids in every facet of their life. Every generation, this is important, y'all, every generation is challenged with a new challenge that the previous generation didn't have to face. This is yours. How are you going to adapt? How are you going to become an expert in it? What effect are you going to bring to the next generation? You wouldn't be satisfied sitting in a cubbyhole, trust me. So let's get to work on this. We're here to help kids enjoy what sets us on fire, music, everything about music, everything from seeing the light in the beginner's eyes and helping them become comfortable with that brand new instrument, taking them to the next year or two and actually hearing music finally coming from them before they get sent off to the high school, uh, helping them develop close relationships, friendships, leadership skills. You take them from that elementary level and you help them reach the high school level. That's your job. Music is in every culture in the world and it's incorporated into every facet of life is never going to go away. 
since 1985 when I started, Neil's on here and he's been way longer than that. We've had so many obstacles in our way. Oh, music's going to go away. There's not going to be band anymore and all that kind of stuff. You know what? We're all still here. It's not going to go away. We need this more than ever right now. And I feel sorry for those students in your school that don't have you every day. Can you imagine that going to school and not having some activity like they are with you? All right, you must be sure that you're looking through a pair of glasses that see the positive things, see the great kids, see the bright future, and the opportunity to spread your passion to the next generation yet again this coming year. Last story before I give you a list of things uh, to begin to think about and begin discussing with other band directors. Why did they ask me to do this clinic? Jeff asked me, and, and he said, you know, you had some, some difficult situation here. So I taught in one of only three counties in the state of Florida, or teaching still, uh, in the state of Florida that have a two-year middle school system. At the time in our, in our almost 100 long, mile long county, uh, there were three systems. In the south end of the county, there was junior high, seven, eight, nine. In the uh, central area, there was six, seven, and eight. And up in my area, there's only two middle schools, and there were seven and eight, all in the same district, all in the same uh, county. Then we had a new superintendent. He was determined to make it all one middle school system. And I was shocked when he said, it's going to go to a seven and eight school system. And it was because of housing. Uh, then they came to me and they said, everybody was panicking at that time. This was huge. Those junior high band directors were so ticked off. And they're like, what are we going to do? And Andre Airway said, Jim, you need to do a clinic on how to do a two-year school system. So I did. You see, I, don't know, I didn't know that my bands were supposed to be playing less music than the junior highs and the three-year middle schools. I thought I was supposed to be playing grade three literature every year and making straight superiors. The challenge made me adapt and create standards that were higher than what I thought I could do. I'm not sure. I believed in myself at that point. But once I even polled the kids and said, do you think I can get you all to a superior rating? And they all said yes. And, and I had that same confidence in them. But it was the challenge that made me bring out the very best of myself and my kids. And you can do this. You just need to adapt and get to work. Don't spend your time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Uh, Tamara, if you would um, put up the copy of the um, handout that I gave, uh, and if everybody will click that and, and open it, we're going to start to open up some questions in just a second here. Don't you, say it again. Sorry. Did you want the model musician or the... Yeah, you return? can throw that in there too, just so we make sure we... But you want the big return? Yes, please. Okay. All right, here's the big thing here, y'all, ready? Before we open up this next topic here. Don't spend your time and energy worrying about things you have no control over. Spend your time and energy on things you have direct control over. Uh, you have direct control over you and those kids in front of you at that point here. So don't worry about all that other stuff. Uh, in my love and logic training and stuff like that, if you're interested in that, you'd have to talk more about later. Or we can share that, but that's another clinic. The teacher makes rules for themselves, not rules for the class. So I would just simply say something like, you know, I'll speak or I'll start when it's quiet in the room. You know, instead of saying, you all need to be quiet, all those kind of things here. I want to go back to the love and logic, love and logic type of, of, of thinking right now. What things am I going to do to control myself and bring to my classroom? What am I going to allow those students to do to make me feel comfortable? And what am I going to do to make them feel protected from me? And so there is a handout that you should all have right now. And if you click on it, this is where you're going to need to start writing down some possibilities of some solutions. Okay. And then I'm going to come back at the very end. Tamara, you said uh, you'll give me a five-minute uh, warning, and I'm just going to close it out at the very end. So, all right, on the um, handout, can you find out um, if people can see that? Um, okay, so I put the link to the handout in the chat, and for some reason the, the link didn't, so you're going to have to copy and paste. Are, are you Somebody, able to? It's, it's, I, I was able to open it. Yes, people are able to open it. 
Okay, good. So let's just go ahead and um, can you tell me how many people are online right now on, on this? We have um, 89 plus the four of us. Okay. So if all those minds are involved, and like what Paula said this morning here, you put all those minds together here, we are going to come up with the answer to y'all. We're going to come up with some answers. We have a half hour right now. I'm proud of myself, by the way, y'all. Uh, I got through all that introduction there. We're going to come up with some possible answers to things, but all I want you to do is start thinking about the return. So ready in the first statement there, the first and foremost, we must make sure that we are addressing things that will make the students and their parents, and I should have put administrators in there well, as well, feel safe and comfortable again. And this is not forever, by the way. When they come up with, you know, vaccines and all that kind of stuff, or we're ready, you know, we can, we can easily get stuff. We, we, can, we can come up with some things where we can actually return back to more normal. But this is just for now. Look through their eyes, please, not your own eyes. When I walk into my son's house and my grandkids come up to me, I never stand up as an adult. If you saw me at my son's house, I'm always on the ground and I'm always on the level of my grandchildren. I will never stand up and be like this towering adult over it. I want to get on their level. Please do that. Think through the eyes of your students. Their comfort and safety is more important than your content. All right, be ready for a performance gap, by the way, even within the ensembles. Keep in mind, y'all, if they were beginners last year, they only had one semester and a couple of weeks of beginning band. So where are they now? That's kind of scary. But we're all in the whole world's in the same boat, not just you. So relax, get it off your shoulders and just say, okay, we're going to find out where you all are. But don't expect the same um, cohesiveness that you had in all the other years of your teaching. They're not going to be on the same uh, level. Reevaluate them, give them some time, but they're going to catch up, I promise you. All right, instruments. In Brevard County, we have uh, teams of band directors. We all agreed we would help each other clean our instruments. So uh, I've been to two of them, and I think one, we had nine band directors in, in the band room, and we cleaned every instrument that was returned after the COVID thing. If it wasn't returned, if it was not used uh, during that time, then we still cleaned them, but if, it was, if we had time to. And the other one was seven. And uh, there was one yesterday, it was about five or six band directors, but maybe think like something like that, having some cleaning parties. Every one of them provided something to eat, some one of them had pizza or whatever like that, and everybody ate after they cleaned. And so help them clean, help each other clean, become that community we all need right now. How are you going to do quick fixes on instruments when they need you to do that? I hope you're jotting some answers down. From me now on, and when a kid says, my flute's not working, uh, a real quick pair of gloves are going to go on. You know, I'm going to have a box right there. I'm going to take the kid's instrument. I'm going to do the adjustment, whatever needs to be done. I'm going to hand it back to the kid. Is that kid going to feel comfortable? Yes, I had gloves on. Those type of things. Just keep thinking like that. Get a box of gloves for the front part of your room. Just think like that. Uh, maybe have a rag or disposable gloves or whatever like that when you're checking instruments out. Keep a box secure because you know what middle school kids are going to do, right? They're going to get them. They're going to blow them up. They're going to tie them up, just whatever. So keep them away from kids. All right, procedures for you and your students. What precautions do you need to take as the leader in the room? Okay, what do they need from you to feel comfortable? What do you need for your physical classroom to live in this new world? So think about your room right now. What is it going to look like? Paula said the same thing that I, I'm basically thinking is how many people and how, can, how far can you spread them out around that room? Um, there, Mike Hammond's working on something right now with some kind of divider thing. I'm looking at, I saw a picture. I didn't get a chance to respond to him. Um, I watched the Texas bands and I saw these face shields for the flute players and they were playing flute. And so the air is hitting inside that shield. Um, I'm not going to have kids do breathing exercises anymore, all those kind of things. I don't want to get ahead of my presentation here, but, but they're going to be doing breathing exercises through their instruments maybe. But those are things we all need to think about. And it doesn't matter what I say I would do. It matters what the kids and I agree on and what maybe parents and, and uh, administrators also, they can help me with that thinking through there. But think about your classroom. Uh, what are your fears about being around students? Give them the parameters for you. Take care of those issues and stick with them. Um, get a cool looking mask. 
I've told our schools, why don't you uh, get to your with your administrators right now and just get logo things, you know, or, you know, astronaut high school things here. Just make them look cool. Uh, I saw one nurse and she'd drawn a smiley face on a, on a regular blue mask thing there. So anyway, um, what are their fears? Look at it through their eyes. Include them in the process. Include them in the process. Hygiene, please. Don't assume they need they know how to do that, you know. I taught my kids every year how to cough, sneeze, everything, man. I mean, we went through it all. I talked about floss and teeth one time, and a kid goes, what are you talking about? What is floss? No joke, y'all. And all the other kids were like, ooh. So I pulled the kid aside, and we had a good talk about flossing. Anyway, sorry, y'all. Um, all these, you have to model. You can't tell kids about sneezing or coughing or whatever like that, and then you're not doing it yourself please make sure you're modeling those things. If you weren't a cheerleader before, you've got to be a cheerleader now, okay? If I, if I see my wife and she's looking beautiful, I tell her she's beautiful. I'm not gonna miss the opportunity to not compliment something. If I see somebody working hard, I go, dang, man, you're such a hard worker. Uh, all those things, and I'm gonna hold this book up and I hope you all can see it, uh, come from the come from the teaching of John Wooden. He's just like a major, major, major mentor to me. And uh, he has all these books and stuff like that. Just get them, get them used, get them cheap off of Amazon. But it's teaching kids how to be um, good character, just good character. But I never assume that they had those good character qualities. I taught a character lesson every single day. So teach them the things that they're going to need to know to be around you and the other kids in your room. Don't assume, because if you assume and they do it wrong, you're going to get angry at them. Don't do that. Be a cheerleader. All right. Um, they're going to be fragile, by the way. And they haven't been around this many kids in a long time. And when those bells ring, I don't even know what's going to happen. How many bell uh, schedules are going to be to get half the kids in the hallways and stuff like that? We'll have to find out. That's not your problem. Um, anyway, uh, be very positive with them. What about handing out materials? What does that look like? Just think about it. What would you, if you were sitting in their chair, if you were an 11 year old kid, how would you want that thing handed to you? Whatever it is, a book or, you know, some kind of material or sheet music or whatever, how would you want it handed to you? Find a way to hold, uh, to hold and have them take one, maybe, maybe a stack and you got gloves on and they take one or something like that. Or maybe you have a student per class period and that's their job of the day. I and mean, I'm going to give as many kids uh, a, a science task to do. Uh, and help out as many as I can develop leadership with. Um, that's what I always did. And I always took the worst kids in the first place and I always asked them to help out. And then they were on my side as well. But maybe a kid a day is wearing gloves and they do all the handing out of stuff. I don't know. Y'all think about that. Um, how do you plan on cleaning everyday things in your room now? Your door handles, pencil sharpeners, commonly touched things. Just begin to think about your room and what you would want. If it's in the back of your mind, it's in the front of their mind. <laughs> Trust me. All right. Uh, what are your habits when you're working individually with students? Man, I would go up to the kids. I mean, my band room was loaded before school. Sometimes the chairs were just packed and there was no room. And I said, man, slide over. And half of my butt cheek was on the chair and half of their butt cheek and the other kid. And I'm listening to their pass offs and I'm signing them off. And then I move over. Y'all move over. You know, those days are over. They're over. So what is the new guideline for you when you're working with kids individually? What's going to make you and them feel comfortable? Sorry if this sounds crazy, y'all. What are your new guidelines for yourself going to look like? Okay, Lysol wipes in your classroom. Be ready. Every door handle, all that stuff. Don't think you're going to have to buy it all. And somewhere on here, I said, look, uh, get kids to bring stuff in. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, kids can bring things in. A lot of teachers have kids bring in paper towels and all that kind of stuff like that. Give them extra credit. Do what you need to do. All right. What about moving stands and chairs every day? It's going to be like grocery carts. Put one student in charge of that. Okay. What about pencils? They can't be sharing pencils like that anymore. Think about what you're going to do. Face shields for woodwinds, maybe. Least definitely flutes. Um, they're about 248 or something like that. I heard from one of the choir people who's going to buy them. Uh, for their for their for their entire choirs, they're going to get the school system to pay for it. But anyway, uh, they can be 3D printed as well. Consider asking for your cafeteria. I did that you know, about three or four years at Jackson Middle School. We had three full-time music teachers, and uh, the cla the uh, cafeteria was a designated classroom. All teachers knew that's a music room. 
except for lunch period. So if your administration will let you do that, you get a bigger, better, spread out, more spread out room if you're allowed to do that. Okay. Um, they may or may not, that's something for you to ask them about. But they do, do they, do they dump into your classes or do they expect that you are going to take a, a huge part of the uh, elective load? They did when I was teaching. So I, I would always say, yes, we'll take all those kids. Uh, give me the cafeteria. And I provided a solution for them. Curriculum. Find the balance between calming them down uh, and being concerned about everything and then getting back to work. Okay. The bell rings first day. Get them in, talk about stuff, make them feel welcome, but they're going to want to get to work really quick, trust me. All right, from all of us in FBA, I promise you all this, this is from Neil Down. We all are asking you and begging you, please back off one level of difficulty. You're going to be able to perform one classification level. You don't have to request it or anything. So if I was taking a three and a two, now I'm going to take a two twos or something like that. Or maybe I'm going to take a two and a one. I'm not going to even try that stuff. Just sit back. You get a year where you can sit back and just enjoy the process. Okay. Um, everyone's going to have the opportunity to play everything down one classification. That's automatic. Begin to research good quality literature right now. Find the great ones and great twos and great threes. Find them. Put them on a little list there and then find which one fits your kids best. But don't wait until school starts. Definitely don't wait until, you know, we, if we have the chance to do MPA, don't wait that long. Find out now. Just begin to listen. Begin to ask other people, what's really good quality literature? Uh, and I always use building blocks. If I was going to play this grade three over here, then I started on this grade one, which would take me to that grade two. And second semester, boom, I'm playing the grade three. I always use building blocks. So it wasn't this like a hand them piece of really difficult music. Build them up to that point. For beginners, by the way, everything's normal. They don't know anything about anything. So just keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to think about new curriculum for that. This is already there. It's already established. All right. Um, for your next level groups, review. Review. Reestablish all the fundamentals. Reestablish everything from... Um, um, you know, postures and everything, sound and resonation and everything, and just spend some time on that, but also have some literature to work on too. Don't just do fundamental. They'll quit. They want to do fundamentals and apply it to music, whatever that is, okay? Um, how far should you go back? I went back to pay, book one, number one, every single year. Which Matthews? And I'd say, hey, let's breeze through this book in a week then. Let's just do it in a week. And they go, okay. And then number one, boom, and it sucked. <laughs> and I'm like, see why we need to review? When they were in beginning band, it was like, ah. And they were fine with that. Now I went, Doo. I want perfection. Take them back to number one. It's okay. Just make them feel good about going back to number one. All right. Should you lower your standards or just slow them down? I think you know the answer to that. All right. Maybe some time and activities to reacclimate themselves just to be in a new group again. It is going to be a new group. Classes aren't the same as they were last year anyway. And uh, subtitle sharing activity. All right, thank you, Tim. Uh, I'm not going to be doing um, breathing exercises this year. I'm going to be going to something that they can relate to, um, which is going to be miles per hour of air. So if I say play that note at 50 miles an hour of air, then Hopefully that's going to transfer right through their instruments at 30 miles an hour of air and 80 miles an hour of air. Something that's going to, they don't know forte, mezzo forte, those are, they don't know how to do that. So just relate it to that. Okay. Do something they can relate to for those physical activities. I'm going to jump down now. Oh, a, a lapel mic. Some people have those and they never use them. Instead of you, if you're, hopefully you're going to be wearing your mask all the time, especially at the whole first part of the year. We'll see what happens in the unfolding of that. Um, Think about wearing your lapel mic so that you don't have to scream and holler, especially if you're talking through a mask. Uh, and by the way, the chamber music portion of this is going to be really important now, whether there's five kids in your room, whatever, getting that big, beautiful sound is going to be so important. And if you have the opportunity to get those big bands, that's going to be awesome. Our instrument fittings, there's a lot here on instrument fittings, but what does testing look like on instruments now? And I pulled many, many, many band directors, including myself, and more band directors than not, than not, never tested on instruments when they were in band. And they turned out to be band directors. What do you want to play? 
What do you want to play? What, you know, what, so just think like that instead of thinking you have to do fittings. You don't have to do fittings. Most of the band directors that you have never tested. Okay, maybe do more listening and fitted matchings to their physical aspects, their hands and their teeth and all that. Um, where you, and, and they can form the embouchures and they can do that without blowing air and all that kind of stuff to see if they can do that. Have a set of demonstration instruments for you. And if you can't play them well, at least show them. And this be a part of the music.org. Uh, check out on YouTube, BPOTB, which is be a part of the band. And there's every single instrument. It's like they're one minute or less, 48 seconds or whatever. And it's somebody introducing and they're playing the instrument, showing you all about it and everything like that. Just check that out. It's a great resource. The Army Field Band has great resource about that as well. Um, uh, no shared mouthpieces or instruments this year. Um, I'm not going to charge my kids rental fees. I'm just not going to do it. I'm, 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 I'm not in the classroom right now, but I'm, I work with all the band directors in Brevard County and I'm going to really beg them, you know, people don't have that kind of money right now. So maybe just say they're, they're waived for first semester or something, whatever you guys figure that out. Um, adjust for parents at least. If they can pay for it, great. If they can't, adjust for that. Um, all those things that are listed there and I want to give time right now, I, uh, one minute left here. Are parents and students allowed to help clean your rooms? I don't know. Plastic reeds, maybe at the beginning of the year, especially so they can keep them all clean. And think about what you do is going to affect and ripple affect all of us. If one program does something crazy, y'all, it'll be on the news and it'll shut down all of our programs. So be very careful about that. Be very careful about what you think is, is good. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I'm going to say when we get back, greet them, welcome them back, make them feel welcome in your room, make them feel like a community within the school, uh, ask them what they need in order to learn and have fun and make music, start slow, with uh, re review with the returners, challenge them, uh, no two will be on the same level, adjust your thinking, uh, all that kind of good stuff, model for them all the right behaviors that you want and let them know how important they are to you and to the group. Uh, and just, I'm just gonna beg you to have an awesome year. So Tamara uh, and Amy, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. There's gonna be some questions, let's just open it up. Thank you all for letting me present to you guys. And, and I really appreciate that. My highest respect to all of you and anything I can do to help out, please contact me. I'd, I'd be more than welcome to, to help you. Well, thank you so much, Jim. It is just wonderful. Um, I don't know if you, the rest of y'all know, but I got to, was lucky enough to work in the same county as Jim um, mm -hmm. for a little bit. And, and I loved hearing his voice and, and all of his wonderful thoughts. They're always inspiring. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and use the Q and A um, and you can put your questions in there. You can also, are we doing raising hands, Amy? Um, I'm keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Um, Dana Cole has her hand up. I don't know if she has, if she has a question or. Maybe, no, I'll allow her to talk. There we go. No, I, I can, you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I actually didn't have a question. I, I was trying to let you know that I couldn't get his link open, but thank okay. you for your call. I'm sorry. Hey, Jim. Okay. Oh, hey, Dana. So How is there a way, Timur, that one of you all could like open that up and then copy paste or something like that? or and send Um. It? I think what happened is when I um, put the link in, it didn't, um, and someone may have just fixed it, but. Michael Warren did. Yeah. Oh yeah, he put it Thank in a Google Doc. There you go, thank you, Michael. I'm not technologically savvy enough to think of those things. <laughs> All right, let's let it rip. There's a lot of minds here. Let's get some thoughts. Oh, thank you, Paul. I love you, Paul. I don't see any questions. Well, as, as everyone's thinking, I just, I want to say that kind of the most, the most important thing and what resounded with me the most was you really have to find a way to connect with kids because that's what this is about. We teach children. Um, and, and so thinking about ways to connect with them and, you know, we still don't, none of us know what we're doing in the fall. Um, and hopefully it's not virtual, but if it is, we need to start thinking about how we can make those connections. 
And if Jeannie's on, I would love for her to um, be able to tell what that product is for the flutes. Thank you, Ariana. Um, better. There are a couple of questions. Oh, there they are. They're starting to come. Uh, do you want me to start giving up? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So, how would you approach correcting hand position or assisting with embouchure on a beginner that's struggling? Modeling only. You... That's probably the that's probably the answer. Yeah, because you know where you used to go touch everybody, you can't you can't do that anymore. So that's a great great question. Um, so Julianne, thank you for asking that. Everybody start thinking of that. But yeah. Uh, super slow, everybody. Put your thumb right there. Let's do that one finger at a time. You know, don't just say hold it like this. They're not going to do it. Uh, take a picture of them if you can, uh, and then show it to them and say, say see what you're doing here because they just don't know. Um, but I always start in mouthpieces first. Make sound first, and then get to the instrument. You have to think about that. Great question, but yeah, alternate. Okay, also, what about emptying spit valves? Do it in trash cans also. We are going to have to think about letting kids in locker rooms in small groups. I saw something with the Texas bands. Uh, their marching bands are already started back again. I thought it was brilliant. Each kid had a little bucket. <laughs> you can't just let them empty their spit on the ground. Each kid had their own little spit bucket, and they would just empty their spit in their spit bucket. So just, you know, you can get some like, um, like disposable cups or something like that. But good question. That's only brass. So keep thinking like that. Keep thinking, what's the minimal? No percussion need that. Uh, unless you're up in the pan hem. Never mind. I'm just joking. This bit. Anyway, um, the tune tobacco. Um, I saw that, by the way. Um, but woodwinds don't need that and percussion don't need it. So maybe just for brass, disposable things. But yes, great question. You got Judy with you. Hey. Hey you guys. Jeannie, can you talk about that real quick, please? Uh, yeah, it's just called flute. What? What's it called again, Jay? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> flute well, Air you Shield. Take a second and figure it out, yeah. and then come back it's, on. He's, you're it's still fluteairshield.com. Yes. And you can go to their website. I'm gonna try to uh, see about ordering some, but you know it's hard right now with nobody at school. Yeah. Check out check out the face masks also, and I thought you know just let them write their names up on top of that face mask or whatever like that. Let them draw a design or something so that flute players will think they're really cool. Um, but those shields are are two dollars and forty eight cents or something like that. But the flute yeah, the shield, shield you're talking about is around ten dollars or so. Whatever, check them both out and see which one's yeah. best. Yeah, well, it goes the shield that there it goes on the flute itself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So the air awesome. is going back right back at them. Awesome. And so you don't have to manage anything in front of their face. Daniel just put the clip up how, there. I don't know how sturdy they are and how long they'll last at the middle school level. Yeah. Daniel put the clip up there so everybody can see it. What else, y'all? Someone also recommended for the spit about using um, the pee pee pads. pads for puppies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. The PV Good. pads for puppies. Yep. Yeah, who's going to take care of uh, throwing it away? You know, being honest, y'all, has, has anybody else, does anybody else take a walk with those little, they're like a, a long, they're a handle, they're picker upper things. Yeah. And, uh, we have a cabin up in North Carolina. Every time we walk, we take those cap, we take those with us and pick up stuff and put them in there. So I would get one of those long picker upper things and oh, just that's good. Up and throw them in a garbage can. There's another question. So, has anybody talked about the uh, entrance and exiting of your room because of space? We haven't talked about that yet. So in one door, out the next door, out, out, out a different door? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Like at Publix, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Here's another question for you, Jim. It's from uh, Jordan Sawyer, who's actually teaching in Texas. Uh, so has anyone has anyone had a conversation about linking band programs together or helping students connect virtually to other programs to share experiences, provide mm -hmm. cross programming assignments, et cetera? Is this something that admin might get behind? Awesome idea. At this least at least by districts, even, you know, we always try to encourage that. That's awesome. Um, that's something that we should probably think about. Especially yeah. the kids that uh, their parents are afraid to send them to school. We don't want them to lose that. They'll be back eventually. My thought is, and I've talked to Ian about this, I think maybe at the beginning of the year it's going to be less numbers at school. 
And then those parents are going to be doing that virtual again. <laughs> it's all going to backfire. And they're going to start sending them to school again because they want them out of there. But uh, great. I would be willing to work on something like that. If you would contact me, I'd be willing to work. Um, there's um, Tim says, I'm going to only start kids on flute, clarinet, trumpet, and trombone for beginning band. This will free up inventory to go one-to-one -one for seventh and eighth graders at his school. When would you make the switch to color instruments, etc.? Would you wait until the vaccine and herd immunity or an entire year? Mm. For me, if you're asking me personally, I'm hoping that something's going to be around by second semester. Uh, I let my kids start on, on basic instruments, but then they had to change over by semester two. Um, so I would think second semester, but you guys talk about it. Jeannie, say something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just going to depend on programs of how many instruments you have. So if you have, you know, because I try to start what I have if, if I can. And if I have tubas and bassoons and I don't want them used if a kid wants to use them, but uh, rather than them just sitting there. So for me, it's going to be about numbers of kids, that are, you know, assigning instruments that you can't share a tuba and you can't share a baritone. That's going to limit. So whatever you have left is going to be what kids can start on, I think. Yeah. yeah. Any, any ideas for creatively still holding performances, outdoors, virtual, any ideas for that? And that's it's something that we ideas. all want everyone sharing. We want people to share, but yes, as far as I'm concerned, there's going to be a lot more outdoor or patio area. Like if you have uh, big atrium type things or any of that patio area, get them out of the sitting next to each other. They can stand around, you know, if they have that kind of thing, instead of an auditorium, I'd get them standing around places, you know, big commons areas or whatever like that and have the kids performing. This next question, uh, somebody think about it, um, would the NAFME um, study, will there be other protective accessories for instruments? You're talking about various instruments? What does anybody think about that? I'm wondering if they mean that once that the study out of Colorado comes out, if yeah. they're going to maybe make even recommendations about what sort of protective accessories are going to be the most effective uh, or you know is it something that already exists or maybe something that somebody's going to have to develop and, and this, i think oh, go ahead go i'm ahead. sorry i i think the reason that the flute has been paid so much attention to is because that's the only one in the studies that they did in europe where um the the aspirations and the droplets went anywhere um everyone else was okay as long as you did some sort of social distancing. Somebody was putting bandanas around the end of a trumpet bow with a hair tie, like basically like a, like, like a rubber band hair tie. That's cool. Um, and I don't think that would stifle the sound, probably. It, did, it didn't very much at all. Like uh, that. I noticed on Facebook just the, I think it was even yesterday, uh, that Jeremy Williamson came up with uh, some sort of I, he came to some sort of contraption um, that he used a, a, a see-through like plastic plate on the end of the bell um, of the instrument to keep the stuff from coming out. So I'd be interested to see how, how that works for him. It was, it was up near the mouthpiece oh, that's right. to that's prevent right. the spray. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cause that, I know that's what we're all worried about is those beginners are very exuberant in their yeah. attempts to make <laughs> lovely sounds. And we can and, keep this, uh, topic going throughout. If we can get a, a Google Doc or something like that, this mm -hmm. is what I would love to see for the state is people keep giving this kind of information throughout the rest of the summer. I'm going to jump to ASA's real quick because ASA, there was a video that uh, we used to use in Brevard. Um, Brandon Sloan did the video, but when he left uh, Johnson Middle School, he said he left the video there. But he took the uh, Army Field Band video and it shows everything. I mean, it shows how to produce the sound, shows hand positions and everything. And instead of it being this long video, uh, he had cut it down into about 10 minute, 15 minute video and it did every single instrument. He cut out all the introductions and all their extraneous talking and he just went right to the points. And I'm thinking, I'm not volunteering Tim, but if Tim Ostro might be able to get on something like that, if he knows how to do that, uh, um, 
Brandon edited it with some type of editing thing and he just cut out all the extraneous stuff and he just went right to details. If we could do that, the video's already made. They did an awesome job. We just need to have that posted. Great question, Lisa. I almost wonder if it would be beneficial um, to have some place for members um, across the state to be able to submit um, you know, suggestions or ideas, or even like I had an email from someone in my district that um, that asked, you know, just to survey the district to see what other schools or other, you know, counties, because we have like nine or 10 counties in my district, um, and, you know, to see what everybody else is doing so that it might make it easier for others who have had less guidance to plan. Um, you know, it might not be a bad idea to have some sort of place to drop those things um, and then people can access them and, and decide what things might be helpful to them and what might not. I wonder if there's a Facebook page we can start or something like that, because this is what we need. And Jordan, uh, you know, that, that type of thing, linking band programs and everything that you talked about earlier, uh, that's awesome stuff. But I would love to see this continue for the rest of the summer because we're, we're opening this can. We need to keep these ideas flowing. Absolutely. Maybe a Facebook page, if somebody's willing to do that, we all can join. Um, yeah, I can do it. I, 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 somebody. That's something I can. Daniel put on here beginning band boot camp on YouTube and also those videos that I talked about uh, earlier. It's on your sheet there. Um, those are great videos. And there's a lot in there. There's a lot for teachers mm -hmm. and for band parents and everything else like that. I think they were put together uh, in Texas. I'm not sure. The master musician document. Um, I don't think I shared this yet, but I will put it in the chat in just a second. Um, I made it into a Google Doc. We've got a couple more questions and then I think we need to wrap it up. Asa said he's got a Google sheet of links to YouTube videos. Um, and even if we could find a place where we could put documents like this, mm -hmm. you know, a Google folder where people can share things. Um, awesome. and, and, and website for resources and submissions. I think Facebook, a Facebook page would be a good place to get that started and then maybe a Google folder. Is there um, anyone that can volunteer right now? I'll do, I'm happy to help. Yeah, I, awesome. Amy and I can get that, get that done. If, we'll, if we all hit it and share it, then maybe all these people can see it and we can do that within a week or so. Yeah, and we also have a YouTube uh, site for FBA. Yes. Okay, wow, that would be awesome. You know, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the Army Field Band. Um, one of the flute players in there is a former student of mine, uh, Troy Palantonio, uh, graduated from FSU. And I'm, I know he's done some things online, uh, YouTube and things like that. And a lot of those people have been doing that, but I, I'm sure if I got in touch with him, if anybody needed a flute clinician, I'm sure he'd be love, he'd love to do it. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, it is. But we would get out of this, uh, this uh, clinic right here. This is awesome. And we will continue to work on it. It's, uh, my job, we're going to keep everything open um, for a few more minutes, but it is three o'clock. So it's my job to remind everyone that there's a wonderful session at four o'clock talking about the why, uh, which is so important. And there's also a, um, a happy hour at 7 p.m. with uh, Gary Green, and that's uh, sponsored, I believe, by uh, French All County Music. Yep. And uh, so we hope to see everyone there. Thank you all for coming today. And thank you so much to Mr. Jim Matthews, um, as My always. My pleasure, y'all. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Kathy.